Hey guys, Player of X here. Um, today I wanted to go over role playing a noble in um, both D&D and Pathfinder or any tabletop uh, RPG. Um, I wanted to go through each of the backgrounds um, and with starting with noble and making a way down through each class. Um, that way people will understand the fluidity of their backgrounds and not just a background is something that they get some stats from or they get some items from. This is more than that. This is a representation of who you are as a person in uh, in the game world and how you interact. Um, the Noble, as always, you know, around, you want to wander around your level. So if you're level one, your Noble might be uh, more, how do I say, uh, naive to the world around it. Um, they uh, might not have left the comfort of their home and they're just adventuring out so uh, they might find things brutish and uh, ghastly and like the sight of a goblin might scare them the first time um, so think of it like that you know they've lived a very sheltered life in the early levels um, but once you get around mid levels like level five ish if you're starting at a later level you know they might have seen more of the world but they still go about with a, a demeanor of them but uh, they might not be as garish. They might not want to ride a dirty wagon in first level that's covered in dirt, uh, things like that. Or they want their clothes always clean and stuff like that. And they have a nice shiny sword that's never seen battle and has no damage on it or anything like that. So um, first, let's go over the uh, Barbarian. So the Barbarian um, Noble, uh, I think of it as uh, two ways. One, I think of the noble uh, in not general society, but in a smaller niche. So, um, think of this as the chieftain's child, or um, the head of a clan. If you're starting at a higher level, I would see like head of a clan um, type uh, barbarian. One whose uh, barbarian background is... Um, they're very spiritual or something. Um, they were the head of their um, their barbarian uh, clan moving from area to area. Maybe um, their clan was killed by another uh, barbarian uh, encampment and you were the only survivor and you're ashamed because you're with a chieftain or whatever. Or if you're a lower level, you're the chieftain's uh, child and this is your journey to become a better uh, person to um, see the world as the chieftain once did and make a name for yourself and come back proud as someone who can take over as um, the uh, chieftain's son and be the successor that they should be um, another way you can uh, play them is the Osu, or the rich, snobby, uh, noble barbarian, one that uh, looks down on peasants. Um, now, I want to preface this with, this is something that should not be done to your party members. Um, being snobby to party members and looking down on them, it's not very conducive to a friendly environment. It can be fun every once in a while to poke fun of the rogues snooping through people's bags and stuff like that, to look down on something like that. But you want to keep this to uh, more the uh, outside world where you don't want the filthy goblin to touch me you're lowly and you look down on them and they have this this anger and this rage that they uh, tap into because they don't want to be touched because they're dirty and and conniving and sneak uh, sneaky and stuff or you know they demand fine wines in the tavern because that's how they are they're snotty and they're stuck up but they still have the party's back um this can work really well. It's really fun. It's very animated. Um, uh, I would look inspirations from anime and stuff because that's a, a big one. Um, the, the snuck up, snobby, noble. Uh, even something like Game of Thrones. Um, look at uh, the Lannisters where they have this demeanor about them and they think they're better than everyone. This can work really well for your barbarian. Um, but uh, think about the way that they snapped or they have the rage. Maybe it's like a bloodline where their father or their great-grandfather was the Mad King and he's got this tainted blood or something like that. But 
you know, think of how your rage incorporates all this. Uh, next is the bard. The bard noble from the, the house of the many silver tongues. Um, this bard could be super fun, uh, very written, very uh, intellectual. Um, they don't have to be an intellectual. They could be just very charismatic, have a way about them. They uh, introduce themselves in many flagrant names and many titles. Um, again, this is for the benefit of the party. Um, oh, you won't give the Duke of York uh, a discount at your store and his many friends? Something like that to really incentivize his name and his titles. Uh, he could also be like a, a lawyer type where he's good in courtrooms and he knows how to sway the people uh, into his thing. I could see this uh, bard helping the party get out of jail and stuff like that because of his way with words. Um, Think of it like that. Maybe he doesn't use an instrument, but his words are his instrument. Uh, he knows how to talk to the nobles. Uh, another type of bard noble would be the jester. Uh, the court jester is usually seen as a peasant or something, or maybe you come from a long line of jesters, uh, and you're looking for the next noble to uh, sway with uh, your many antics. And, you know, it could be a family thing where jestering runs in the family. And um, this is just something that it's always been taught. The, the college of jesters. And you're just one of many. And uh, I could always see this as fun, you know. Um, a, a nice way to kind of uh, uh, trash talk other higher ups because you yourself are a noble. Uh, this can be really fun in any party. Um, so there's that one. Next, we have the Cleric. The Cleric Noble, um, I have notes here, let's see, for Clerics. Ah, yes, for the Cleric, the thought is your parents are the head of a church. Maybe they are the head of the Church of Thor, or the heads of the, the Church of any type of uh, godly establishment that's in your... Um, in your game, any pantheon, stuff like that. And you're their offspring, so you have this reputation to live up to because your family is well respected in the church and in the, the organization and throughout the world. So they know you as the child of this person. You know, your parent is close to what they would think is the word of their God. So you have a reputation to live up to. And, you know, maybe you don't really see it that way, but this they were giving you titles and stuff and you know, powers and you know you lived your whole life in the church and this person uh when you're role playing this think of not only your nobility but how your god changes uh will affect your nobility it's like that with any cleric but having this noble title above that might uh, contradict what your God uh, says. Sometimes, you know, as a noble, you have to make tough decisions like marrying into other families and, you know, uh, having to deal with people who are under you, such as peasants. Now, how does this interact with your God? Maybe um, your God is like, oh, no, you know, cherish people and treat everyone right and all this stuff. But as a noble, you can't always do that because it's all about power and wealth of your family and these things can interact and it can be really fun for the party. Um, and clerics are always useful for parties. Um, next is Druid. So with Druid, uh, there is two things that I can think of for the Druid. Is your parent is maybe the noble of the forest. Maybe um, uh, you are the child of um, a wood elf uh, in the forest, the, of a, a forest kingdom or a desert kingdom or whatever type of Druid you know you want to play ocean druid you know you're the the child of a sea uh nymph or something like that you know or uh, uh, uh or something you know whatever um and your their offspring so you're venturing out into the world with this elemental power and this um this uh, realization that you know earth and mother and all this other stuff are more important than your nobility or maybe it's not and through your noble blood you you're like my ancestors have come to control nature and its powers and this is how we are better or whatever you know whatever way you want to play you're noble but you know there's the thought of 
you are a noble from this other kingdom. Maybe it's a kingdom that nobody knows about. The, the kingdom in the forest or the, the kingdom in lava or something like that. You know, a, a fire giant kingdom lost inside the earth and you are a um, furbolg druid of fire and your nobility is with giants and stuff like that. Um, another thought for a druid is maybe you were trained by the swamp king of the forest or something or uh, you know uh, tragic backstory edgy backstory your parents died and you were raised in the forest or whatever uh that's more of a ranger thing but maybe you know your best friend was the king of the swamp a, a toad such as this picture and the you were trained that way and you're going about seeing the world and spreading the the word of the swamp king through uh through your druidic powers and that could be a cool way to offset this type of stuff um next is the fighter classic noble fighter is the knight you give him a knight uh, a cavalier a uh, you know you were taught by the best the world's best masters and that's why you've mastered a thousand different sword techniques and axe techniques and you are uh, decked out in fresh plate armor and you, you know you white knight everything and um you know you're just really well trained by the best of the best and you know come up with like the name of your master your three the three sword masters of the the great expanses or whatever oh i learned the 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 great sword techniques from master orion up in the mountains in the north you know stuff like that because your family has the money to send you to do these things and they have the money that can provide you with this training and this is how you got your training and your martial adapt and you trained in a thousand different ways uh don't make it too edgy it'll be like oh i spent my whole life training in the blade because it's not just about training with weapons as a fighter you should also be a master tech you've studied war maps and you've studied uh you know uh, combat strategies and the best way to to flanking and using uh wartime uh, equipment such as catapults and ballistas and stuff like that and how to fortify and you see the best defenses this type of fighter this mindset think of like game of thrones like um all of game of thrones pretty much they're all fighters um john snow a, a trained fighter from birth um, any of the nobles in, that was all like wartime fighters and stuff and they're trained by the best to to get into these situations and they just not they weren't just brutes they're not just like barbarians they're trained and their minds are trained and this can work for their um their subclasses too you know samurai and all this other stuff and in um pathfinder too this can all work out uh, fighters are pff, the easiest noble i would say um next is the monk which i would say is the hardest noble to pinpoint um Monk nobles don't really make too much sense to me. Um, the only thing I really could think of as a noble monk would be that your monastery is well respected in the land. Maybe you were defenders of, of the way or something like that. You protected the lands and a king gave your monastery noble rights and or family rights and stuff. I mean, the cliche of the noble sending their child to a monastery to learn, I mean, it, it's so cliche that it's really hard to put the monk as a noble. It can be done if you're doing more of a, a Eastern style, uh, Japanese or Chinese style um, fantasy where it would make sense. Um, think of something like a samurai or... Um, Edo period, um, Japanese fighters and stuff like that. That could make more sense as a monk, but I don't really see because monks, as a historical thing, were more like peasants and uh, stuff like that. Think of like ninjas and, and stuff. So I don't really see um, monks being noble. But hey, if you can come up with something, leave it in the comments because I would love to think of one or see one. Uh, next, paladin. Uh, paladin easiest one to do chosen by birth the you were raised in a noble house and the gods sang the day you were born and you were to go on to do great things uh paladin nobles are like like that with the fighter they're 
very much like the fighter. So you can take all the fighter stuff and move it right into the paladin. All you need to add is that you are the chosen one. You slam that right in there. Your god has chosen you by birth. Maybe you have a mark uh, somewhere on your body that sees you were... When you were born, the clouds parted way and sunshine, sunshine beamed down from the heavens. Um, something like that. You are the top of the top of the nobles um, and maybe you don't carry yourself like a noble either and maybe you didn't want this destiny uh, thrown about onto you as birth you you didn't choose this life right but this is what has been preordained and um, you know I can see a cycle which um, uh, a character goes from being a uh, paladin noble to you know uh, being a fallen paladin maybe they didn't want this and they don't want to obey this law and they weren't they didn't want to be chosen by birth and this was thrusted upon them without any choice in their lives and they cast it aside and become a fallen paladin or they redeem themselves in the end and they realized you know with this blood and with this power and with this this ancestral uh, choosing of me I can make good in the world and I can do something more than just become you know the next tyrant of the land and uh it can be really interesting how you role play that one. uh next is the ranger the ranger is kind of falls in the same line as the druid but i would put the ranger more as uh kind of like how the rogue's gonna be where maybe your family died and you were trained in the forest um and you were raised by wolves and you have this lineage of nobility um in your blood and it's what gives you your fey magic it could be your fey noble too you're raised in the forest of the fey wilds or raised in a by a, a noble group of fairies or uh red caps or something like that you know make it interesting the ranger kind of falls in the same line as the um the druid in this one so you know uh whichever one uh, whichever druid stuff I would put over to this but have more martial training you know what trained you in the forest to give you your noble uh, background maybe you were trained in archery by the local satyrs or something like that so really think of it like that and if you're gonna have a companion I would say talk to your DM, DM about giving you a companion at first level uh, saying that you know this was my the last wolf of the noble families of whatever whatever and the lost crest of the the wolf line is, is gone from this land but this is the last white wolf or whatever you know something like that something to spice it up um and make it interesting for that so the rogue the rogue is going to be your noble edgelord <laughs> uh the i still see that the the edgelord background for the noble rogue is possibly the only one that fits um, my family was killed by another noble family, uh, they were assassinated, and I'm seeking revenge. All this stuff works really, really well for a noble rogue, and it sucks to say it, so it's possibly the edgiest one here. Uh, but it works! It works really well! Why else would they be uh, taught on the streets? They had to escape. Their family was assassinated at night, and the last thing that they, your mother did was push you out of a, the second story window and said, run my my child live as the place burned to the ground uh, you know uh, think of Bruce Wayne's manor in uh, the dark night where it's burning down and he can only survive by hiding under a piece of wood and uh, you know maybe the local uh, street gang taught you the ways and stuff like that and you still have that noble upbringing from a certain point and then now you got training in a rogue and now you're Seeking revenge, seeking the family that did you wrong, and stuff like that. So, it's edgy, yeah, that's the rogue, that's what you get. Um, you could also uh, think of it like, maybe you're the pirate king or queen, so your noble title is just one earned through the seven seas, or something like that. Uh, next is the sorcerer, and the sorcerer, it's all about blood. Your noble blood means something. You gain something from your noble blood. Um, you know nobility was always about keeping the blood pure and um keeping it i would say within the family but don't get too incesty about it um but maybe the blood of your family has power maybe the reason why nobility 
stayed inside your family was because the blood running through their veins was magical and could do things and sway people in such ways and you know maybe the other noble houses are also sorcerer families where they're trying to uh marriages in between these two families because of the blood that they have so maybe you know you could be a runaway you could be like oh i was a part of an arranged marriage to another sorcerer and i ran away because i didn't want to marry them i loved someone else but they weren't a sorcerer so i wasn't allowed to marry them because i they didn't want to spread the sorcerer bloodline something like that you know work with your dm um all of these work amazing for a dm oh i ran away from a marriage a hundred percent the dm is gonna love that so talk to them uh see what options you have this could also be like a wild magic thing a dragon ancestry blood something in your family's past has that blood running through their veins next is the warlock the warlock is the same thing as a sorcerer except your family did a pact with a demon or a devil or an elder being to gain this power maybe your great great grandmother or grandfather made a deal with a, a demon from another plane and was like hey we want money and power and the demon's like yeah sure that's fine five children from now i want that kid and it's like yeah i don't care that's them in the future and uh, now it's your time and it's your character and they're looking for them or the demon pact is it's like it's not you but it's your child that i want and it's a super cool way to do the warlock and it makes the most sense your great grandpappy made the deal with the devil and now it's your turn to 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 pay up and this is why you have your powers your warlock powers and last but not least the wizard your noble family has the money they have the money to pay for this 100 percent best wizard school in land you're going to hogwarts and you're learning from the best of the best this also works great for the artificer um or the alchemist from pathfinder where you were taught by the best of the best maybe you went to potions class the most and you you succeeded in that so they got you the best uh potions and brewing kits and herbalism kits and stuff like that or the the uh, artifice or you learned new technologies through the power of your money because th that's how wizards are taught through schools and you went to the best college no duh like that cost money um so yeah a hundred percent maybe you had no wizardly experience in the past but you went to noble wizard school and they taught you the ways of the of the lines and the the veil of um, everything so again uh when you go through the noble, whoops! When you go through the noble, uh, when you pick a noble background, you really got to think of how does this interact with my class? How does the money get involved? You know, talk to your DM is my best advice, and it's always my best advice. You know, um, hey DM, what are the local lords and ladies? Can I be a part in one of their families? Can I be related to them? How would this affect my class? And think about um, multi-classing or if you're playing pathfinder um you know what feats is gonna uh, incorporate in this you know if you're a, a monk of the way of the crane how does this affect um your noble background so you know that's just one way to think about it uh if you got any others please uh leave a comment below let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you guys next time see ya